of uh, peace pressure on us, but it's a village. I think this is a forum about which all of us in Bangalore are proud, Bangaloreans are genuinely proud of. I think we need to kind of keep continuing, at least some of the elder members who remember we need to continue it not for a few more years, we need to continue at least for 21 more centuries. <laughs> So what Sean has to do is it's very interesting. In fact, uh, while before uh, coming to the hall, we were discussing about what is happening to science, what is happening to technology, how information technology is kind of sapping some of the potential people who will go to science and all. See, one of the things which I want to do today is to get a very across a very simple view. Because a lot of times people ask this question. Okay, how long this information technology will go? And will this, uh, what will it be tomorrow, etc. My simple submission to them is, don't look at information technology by the way what we are doing today. If you look back at 20th century, later half of 19th century, and earlier half of uh, 20th century. So we had something called technology. At that time, technology was quite often viewed narrowly with what is called the engineering skill, quite often with mechanical engineering skill, you know, electrical engineering, but just coming. So whatever, it had a particular flavor. But what happened over the century was technology transformed the human life. The way in which we live, the authorization, the automobile, the kind of so-called the uh, people uh, living in different parts and kind of commuting to work, kind of reasonably effortlessly. And then, of course, this kind of comfort, you know, like it kind of enabled every walk of human life. In some sense, many of the manual labor could actually be automated so that people don't have to undue stress themselves. But more importantly, I think it was also nice to the better halves of the all of us, in a sense, kitchen. The ladies were liberated from the kitchen, you know, whether it is a simple equipment in the kitchen or the washing machine, etc., etc. And of course, if you kind of keep going further, it actually changed the way we do science. You know, that man on the moon is a scientific mission. It would not have been accomplished without technology. But we don't really take technology in a very narrow sense of simple uh, manipulation of materials. It's much, much deeper because the material science of it, the physics of it, everything got changed. Something similar is actually happening to information technology. So, and it will probably take a full century to unfold. In some sense, the first generation of technology enabled an amplification of ground power. Information technology enables the amplification of brain power. And it will take a century to unfold. Why Bangalore Science Forum is still having lectures on IT. The IT is still there. Okay? That is the kind of broad principle I want to have. The second thing I want to have in the next about 40 minutes or so is to really take a look at how innovation as such has been happening in this country. Because a lot of time people say that look, okay, you know, something called way to k came and then you know India got into IT and all. It's just not true. It's much deeper. So this, there has been a kind of running current that has been around and to some extent I think the like information technology enabled it to get amplified. So as a country we have been innovating and more interesting stuff, if you really look into the history of the United States in the 20th century, what really happened was so many people could innovate using technology and in the process could change the way the human civilization lives in this planet, okay? which includes the transportation, which includes the communication, which includes our own interaction with machines, and obviously it leads to new organizational structures, it leads to things like banking, it leads to electronification of banking, it leads to stock markets. Okay? So every one of them, in some sense, got benefited by technology. And you actually see that happening, and I think as one of my students generally says, every dog has its day. Okay? And maybe our time has come. When you kind of look out the newspapers, etc., you will see a lot of dark clouds. Okay? There was a time when you also see a 
production only with politicians. Today we associate with every sort of crime. Doctors, to lawyers, to accountants, to companies, to professors, to families. Okay? It doesn't stop anywhere, right? So it is easy for you to think that you know things are falling apart, etc. And I normally kind of remind my student friends, sometimes they don't understand the sad what is happening. I said, you know, if you look at it, okay, I think what we should not forget is that you see the number of MPs in this country is about thousand. And if you take all the other uh, politicians, even assuming that everybody is bad, it's actually not true, only a small percentage is bad. But even then, we are not even talking of one in billion. Okay, let us not forget, million minus one, so many good people are actually doing so many good things, and quite often we tend to forget. And what I will do is, I will be in a series of stories. Obviously, what I know is actually information technology. So obviously, I will take a little bias with you all, right? In the sense that, as my students say, that look, I wear a tinted glass, okay? Which is called IT, right? So I will take examples from IT, but not necessarily limited to IT, and how a whole range of things are happening. And obviously, Bangalore Science Forum, we should actually probably talk about lots of things happening in Bangalore. I will also mention a few things many languages don't know, but many reasons, okay? So that is how I am going to make this story. It's about 40 minutes and 10 slides, okay? So this is the message, India has been innovating. We will talk about Indian innovation in the recent times and ask you this question, are you ready, okay? So of course, the professors have to ask these small definitions, okay? So obviously, innovation literature is also rich, not a book source for us started coming. Because generally, if I talk to my students, they immediately associate innovation with something like an Android product, an iPhone, okay? Which is typically a product innovation, but let us not be overly carried out, carried away by thinking that product innovation is only there. There are also process innovation. I'm sure many of you must have heard of Bombay Delbaba, and I think we should give credit to one of my good friends, and President he passed away two years back, Professor C.K. Pranda, is one person who got American students to document that Bombay Dabawala had better than six sigma quality. <laughs> that is why it is there, okay? And of course the Infosys Global Delivery Model, Monday Nabaga, okay? So started from right in this town, okay, the I am here and go. And it is a Harvard Business School case study. Okay. There is also a process innovation. Okay. And of course, certain things are opportunity-based innovation. For you is a classic example. And of course, we keep talking about incremental innovation, breakthrough innovation, you know, satellite communication, the kind of breakthrough innovation. So many others are innovative, okay, incremental. We talk about all of them. But what is interesting is, I think we should not forget. Okay. So if it was millennia ago, the problem is this country, which actually came out with zero, and more important stuff, the kind of the number in the decimal system. It's very interesting. Because we know, one of my friends puts it nicely, said, you know, we should actually have an intellectual property department many years back, and currently in this stuff. Why? If only we had, say, IT is nothing but some bytes. Bytes are nothing but some bits. Okay, which is zero and one. IT is a three trillion dollar industry. If only we had copyright law, because we invented zero, how it should come to us? So all of us will become like a Soviet Arabian king, right? <laughs> so in a sense, people should not kind of forget. And in fact, it's very interesting, one of my students went to my, uh, he was from Microsoft. I asked him to go and look at Microsoft Museum. Microsoft was a beautiful museum in the, in the Redmond campus. So you will find something very nicely written. If some of you go to visit your children or your friends, etc., don't take a look. It's very interesting. The Microsoft Museum talks of this. See that the number system, the decimal system, came from India. It apparently first went to Arabia. You know, Arabia has a very interesting civilization and you know, intellectually they are at a very different level than what we normally associate unfortunately today. So the rest of the world got it from Arabia. So we call it Arabian numbers. Right? But in the Saudi Arabia, I actually checked in Saudi Arabia, I was in Saudi Arabia, I actually checked. It is still called Hindu numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very interesting, right? How we kind of associate. So in a sense that you know you have a kind of a proof of this. And obviously, in, in I 
you can actually go driving myself just for pair of testing. I collected 50 years of punch out. And actually punch out, you know, they actually measure the starting point and ending points of the lunar and solar executives. People who do it are actually high school, not even high school law, who did not even go to high school. But they seem to have internalized some simple universities. But their accuracy is about 3%. Year after year, almost a year ahead, they are able to ready. So there probably is something in that. That is not perfect. The second thing is if you really care about a few centuries back, look at the funny and grammar. That is interesting for many of you to know. Many computer science departments around the world actually teach a course on funny and grammar. So if somebody starts a course or really able to understand, write some of them. Okay? So they keep saying that the Sanskrit is the best language for programming. Nothing like that. All that it means is traditionally languages are pushed at natural languages and not natural languages. Non natural languages are computer programming languages like C and Java, etc. So, generally speaking, what happens is the computer library is something for which you can write a grammar and you can give it to a program and the program will unequivocally say that a given sentence conforms to this or not. So, we generally say, to use for the delicious language, a parser, either process it as yes or no. That's it, and nothing yes, else, there's no. So interestingly, if you take a certain way, I don't care less. Okay? So technically speaking, it does not exactly go in either way. So many of the natural languages we use sentences which are not precisely definable grammar. And many of the natural languages you want to codify the grammar to such an extent that you can build an automaton and Sanskrit is the only language for which it is a natural language for which there is something called Pandya Grammar. Any given grammatical sentence can be passed as conforming or non conforming. There is no second human language, the natural language, which has this property. But it's interesting, you know, this again, you know, we should see, because I keep telling this to some of the younger members. See, I think a lot of old things are bad. But don't necessarily think everything old is bad. Okay, I love the old generation. It's very interesting. Okay, when we were kids who are still in the high school, 8th grade, 9th grade, we still know reasonably about 24,000 stanzas of Varmi Ramayana. What is interesting is, look at the tradition which actually knew this very carefully. Exactly some nine places, Varmi Ramayana does not conform to Pandi they didn't have this computer program which is there in the University of Michigan today. But somehow they knew, and those seven places are called Asha Prayu. Asha is a region. And the interesting thing is, you know, there are seven great kids. The only thing we know is road memory. But we also know which are those seven places. Manin and Grammar is not well. So, in a sense, there was a sense of internalizing this family complex things in us. That is the reason why we do so well in computing. Okay, so there is one level of innovation. Because second level of innovation I also want to, for many of the, because you know, at least the younger generation is sufficiently divorced from the India's independence or struggle for independence, etc. Carefully look at it, Mahatma Gandhi's Ashimsa is a great process innovation. See, nowadays people think process innovation means we should do BPR, business process engineering, you should have a safety software. Everything is okay. But Gandhiji's Ajimsa is a great process innovation. Look at this. Remember 1930s and 40s, Britain was very different from Britain of today. It was a formidable power on the planet. And Britishers were thoroughly difficult guys. And here is a man who nothing and nothing is what he spent. He did not have anything and it was so difficult to organize this country. But somewhere along he could do that. And first time in the history of humankind, he created something called blood less war. What can be more innovative? So don't necessarily kind of bracket innovation into iPhones and things like that. You know, innovation is much deeper. And of course, I don't know how many of you have watched. Just two years back there was a Star Home Award. It went to a person called Vindeshwar Bhattar. This is particularly a generation because you, the generation thinks, you know, like, you see, it's 
It's very interesting to talk to the younger generation. Other day, one student came to my office. He said to oh, sir, I know it's a mistake, but that's what I do. He said, what? Good things are expensive, but our generation almost thinks if things are not expensive, they are not good. <laughs> but I'm glad that that is going good. But what is interesting is, so what happens is they somehow think that many of these things, you know, you can, you know, you can come up with a new Facebook, you can come up with a new uh, mobile phone, etc. And you know, with no this is, with no this, uh, intention to hurt any of us. See, most of us as Indians, whenever we look at a dirty country, we close our eyes and go. But here is a man who, 40 years back, said he will kind of fix this dirty, dirty front of this country. His name is Vineshwar Patai, he is a PhD in chemistry. And of course, with due respect, sometimes, you know, northern India, a lot of students from Bihar and Patna, they somehow think Bihar and Patna are the wrong cases. By no means, it's a great country, right? You know, Bihar does such an amazing stuff, hopefully this kind of getting it back together. Vineshwar Patai comes from Patna. It's interesting, right? And he came with Sula Sauchale, he came with software guys, nowadays they say, Jarvan, they use software as a service. I said, it must be for that, the nature of the invented. Use the dirty necessaries. Right? Pay for use. It's a business model. And I don't know how many of you know. Go to Stockholm or uh, web page. You will find interesting numbers. Okay? So, average water consumption by solar search or in toilets are about less than three and a half or four and a half liters. These are the standard one of 20 to 50. And something has done a very interesting calculation. Just because they, there are actually million seeds around the world. And I also learned a few things only from Stockholm or the bridge. There are seven countries which use solar sunshine. There are billion seeds around the world. And the water saved out of these million uh, seeds translates to several part of the day. Okay, so it's, in some sense we can be None but consistently done by. So there was a chemistry, there was a technology, there was a business model, there is a. And remember, it does not live on government subsidy. Right? And of course, recently, we you know about Tata Nano. I don't know how many of you have taken a look at it. There is something away from Tata Nano, like a swatch. Swatch is a very simple product which you buy a beach box without too much of uh, continuous electricity, etc. etc. Government actually has a non compressor based refrigerator uh, called Chotu Pool. Most of you do not see these things because they are not stored in Bangalore, because they are not a Bangalore. Okay, some of you mentioned about Dolly Bidino, actually they are stored in Dolly Bidino. Okay, so it's interesting. And right in this town, there are two fellows. One happens to be the nephew of uh, Ramayan Moti, his name is Jerry Rao, Jerry Rao, and another person is Ramesh Rao Nathan. These two youngsters have Amazing goal, you know, I really kind of admire their dauntless goal. And they still think that they will be able to do it in the next 20 years. They will have million homes. And today they already have 2,000 homes, fully well-built apartments between 5 lakhs to 7 lakhs. So in this city, it is so damn expensive that people advertise 3 crores and 5 crores for apartments. They are people building, really, they are not cheating. It's absolutely high quality. They use technology, they use processes, etc. Okay. So, so you have a whole range. So I want you to keep this broader picture. Let me come to something which is kind of quickly I can go through some of them because the reason why I am saying is many of them have IT behind it, that's the reason why I can it. So I talk about. And shampoo in sachet is something which came from one Chennai biosteel company which again got influenced by the way in which you can actually do. They actually found out that if you can actually have a computer controlled packaging machine, which was not there in this country, you could actually do this and out of this game. And suddenly what happened was, people kept saying that, you know, the rural women, they don't care about their care, they don't care about their beauty and stuff. Let us face it, you know, the rural women are as beauty conscious as the other people. It's just that nobody actually ever cared for them. And see, let me kind of jump this Jaipur food, but I don't know how many of you have looked at this Jaipur food. Jaipur food is a very interesting stuff. Once again, my friend, the Sikhar Prabhat, documents it. There's a nice video in his book on innovation. 
And what is interesting is they use some family stones to get cat cat roots. So they are ready. But not limited to eating only in that sense. What is done is a typical artificial foot in the western world is built for a western style of life. That means you have a wheelchair, you can move around, etc. But a typical rural background, there are no chairs and there are no wheels, and even if you have, there is no surface, flat surface, on which it is carried. Very uneven. So what happened was they brought down the cost to by 90 percent. They increased the life by nine times. And the video will actually show a very nice demonstration. This is ultimate, right? That is actually done by University of Michigan two organizations. You can actually see them really laughing because first of all they had never seen this. You know, I'm sure your children and my children also will see, right? Nowadays, you know, one of the nice things which our children miss, they don't kind of find the real job. And in this video, a person with a Jaipur foot, fitted artificial leg, jumps from the tree. Right? I think that's the natural life of the rural folks. I think, I think that is what it is, right? You could actually do this. Okay? Let me kind of get to Arvind Ali Hospital. It's again a Harvard Business School case study. It's a very interesting observation. Okay? And remember that one of the key things that I think plays a role in many of them is that sometimes it actually helps purely in ability to communicate. You know, like you all remember that even good old days, okay? It was not good to be a pundit. You have to be a pundit and some in the so-called the Sabas or Panchikuram or Benares, you have to be kind of approved and said you are a pundit. Otherwise no good. So similarly, in today's world, unless the Western world is a stamp, okay? Otherwise, people think, you know, you are kind of drumming your own, you are beating your own drum. So what happened was, Arvind Hay Hospital did something very interesting thanks to technology, you know, communication, etc. What they did was, they had a Harvard professor come and document what is the average success rate of their cat operation. And they actually found their success rate was equal, if not better, than Harvard Medical College. First point we need. Second thing is, they got some McKinsey consultants to actually do a cost computation and find out the cost of surgery is one tenth. <laughs> then they got an Accenture fellow to come back and do a business process study. And what they did, you know, sometimes this is where, see, see innovation is not limited to PhDs. The innovation sometimes is getting into the core of the process. So what happens is, okay, remember that 100 years of medical education. Most of our doctors also go through the same medical education. So what do you do? Whenever there is a surgery, you think of a theater. Whenever you think of a theater, you also think of uh, maybe a stretcher. When you have a stretcher, you need four fellows to be doing Then you have the usual sterilization, etc. What are every one of them cost money? <coughs> what Arvind Ali Hospital made a very simple observation is character operation when it is performed. The persons who actually go through the surgery are ordinary human beings. What it means is they can walk up to the theater. They can walk up to the table. Right? So they just got hold of all that. Okay. Then they can go on and talk. You know, just use an idea. How do kind of look at it? And they didn't stop there. They actually got some very interesting guys who actually happen to be computer science guys as well as Physics guys, the physics guys were the optometricians. So what they did was, they said, oh, okay. The second thing is, you still need the lens. The lens was expensive. The lens was costing more to ninety nine dollars. They came out with a new design, and new way of manufacturing brought down the price to ninety nine cents. Two ninety nine dollars to ninety nine cents. More interesting stuff. They actually went back to Harvard Medical College and also asked the to look at quality, and they said this is better. So now they export to these countries. They actually have to receive the manufacturing. So, so what you realize is that how any kind of changes. This is something where I have been personally involved. I can tell you with some amount of right. I don't know how many of you know, NASDAQ has been the world's number one online exchange. Okay, it continues to be number one among them. But sitting in Bombay, we have made 
in one form, the world is not one, happens to be national stock exchange. The total volume of trades, we are another one. By numbers, by value, it still happens to be, because unfortunately, you should realize a dollar is 50 plus rupees, right? When a dollar becomes a rupee, it will actually be equal. <laughs> but what is interesting is, you could actually build, you know, it is just not only a way. Obviously, behind it is all computers, and behind it is all the networking. So, how do you take the computers, take the networking, and of course, you know, there was also a big business process engineering because in the process what we did was we essentially broke the back with no uh, disrespect or with no, no hurting physically. We actually had to break the back of some bad guys for stock brokers. Right? So today in this country, it's a small number, like uh, this population, 63 million people participate in Indian stock markets. Okay? And it was less than 200,000. 200,000 to 63 million. Okay. So, what we have been able to do? Okay. So, let me kind of not go further, but I will actually go and talk about a few things which are happening here just in the last few weeks. That short of time. You see, there's a company called Game Market. Any of you have used it? Hand, hand, hand. It's very interesting. When Game Market came, every person in this world, planet, wrote their obituary before they were born. Why? They said, look, what is this? This world is stupid for us. They have no chance of survival and somebody wrote a nice column, dead on arrival. <laughs> because online booking has been around for donkey years and we have huge companies, big companies called Microsoft who are in this one. So they said, there is no chance and after all, you know, you need to kind of be able to go get the access. But interesting stuff, Today, many, many other families have kind of said bye bye to the humans and they have been made by day. What is that made by day? So, what happens is, made by day initially said that you know, now they actually operate the human outside outside India. What happened was that traditionally, reservation systems, they said that look, what is that I need? I need people to be able to buy it here. What made my trip said, you know, they look at it. So, in addition to Vikad, you need lots of games. Okay? So, what happens? How nice it will be that, you know, all of us at least professors, we keep forgetting the bills. Right? You own department of information technology, department of science and technology, you give the bill, and you know what happens in government. So, who will go get So, what do I do? So, then I have to call somebody, I have to call somebody. So, they said that, look, for next to five years, all the receipts and bills will keep it and safely and your ID. So any time you go, you can a small thing, but a great Second thing is, they will give you a reminder by SMS on that morning. More interesting stuff, if you actually put it, they will also take your secretary's mobile number. You know, like, they are all, at least, you know, some of us are kind of belong to the bad category. So half the time what happens is my secretary or someone has to send me a reminder by SMS and call me to take a look at the SMS. That's how we are, right? <laughs> so what are all that make my trip does? One more interesting stuff. If none of my colleagues use make my trip, I don't need a travel department. Because make my trip actually consolidates all and tells me all the bills for the whole month. Right? Simple value and services. So this was something which travel media and could have done. This is something all others could have done. It is simply that, you know, this is what happens. Once you have been doing something happily, you keep doing it happily, just never ask for something. Okay. So, it's a lot of incremental. And the next one, which is again Farindra. Farindra is a great guy of Bangalore, Mandinavala. Nice guy, right? So, what Farindra did is very simple. You all know KSRBC has been running their own reservation system. So, one of the very good uh, public transport. In Chennai, it used to be something called Bangalore Transport Corporation. Several years back, we kind of helped them to build their system. So, what happened was that, but you also have one of these chotus, right? Because some big fellows like Sharma, Transport, BTS, etc. And this sort of found out across the country, because one thing that has happened, we should give credit to Vajpayee. Between 99 and 2004, suddenly this country got highways. We never had highways. Okay? We had what is called like student college in the next year. We used to have connected potholes called roads. <laughs> so now we have good highways. 
So what happens is even you know, in Bihar, UP, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Goa, Orissa, there are small fellows who run small buses. But now they all want to cater to their generation. None of them can afford a reservation system. So what Red Bus does? Red Bus provides a reservation system for anyone on the planet. You can have one bus, you can have hundred buses, you can have thousand buses. But what it does is it does very nicely. No one will work Red Bus. Look at like your own bus, you run it, but everything is done by red bus. And in the process, what I have is today, you can sit in Bangalore and book a ticket from Almora to Devadu. And think of it. So the earlier we all used to get a call, somebody, 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 nothing at all. And they have currently, in fact, it's very interesting, red bus will cross maybe a thousand crore per hour. 2030. Out of nothing, they have to create a business opportunity. Okay. So, what I want you to look at is, don't look at it in IT. IT happens to be the end of the But suddenly, okay, a convenience which you are I can afford in Bangalore is affordable by a remote corner in Nepal, a remote corner in Rajasthan. That is the message which actually I want you to kind of take. Okay. So let me also kind of tell you a couple of maybe three things and then I stop. Okay. One of the things which you should probably know, it will be interesting to know that there is, all of you are using banks and one of the good things that you find today is you don't have to go to the bank. Right? You can do most of this at a bank. And you know, it's interesting at some point in time, it was decided to invest in a product called Venable. And today, 457 million bank accounts. 457 million bank accounts. 16 percent of the global bank accounts run off in Africa. Are you not proud of Bangalore? More interesting stuff. There are only three banking software products in the world which account for 86 percent. All the three banking software products are made in Bangalore. One more example. One by another company called IFS, which was acquired, which is now called Oracle Management Solutions. The third one is by a British company called Nysis, and they are in HPL. They used to be in HPL, they are neighbors. And particularly for the gender members, okay? see, sometimes people will say, oh, sir, you know, you give me a lot of examples or things happen. But you know, cool things don't come from India. But one of the things which people do not know, see, at least now in this life, Kind of smartphones now people are not using iPod. Okay? But iPod is a nice music player, right? The first iPod, which was launched by Steve Jobs himself on July 27, 2001, the core audio codec, audio codec is the core product of an MP3 device. The audio codec for iPod went from an Indian company. Okay, it's called Golden Bear. Not many years now. Of course, okay, let me also tell you the other side. You know, people ask me, say, what happened to Golden Bay? It doesn't exist. So one of my students gave a nice funny example. He said, look, sir, what happens if you go to bed with a lion? You don't come back. <laughs> but, okay. Second thing for my other members, you know. So you can somehow, you know, you can do great work if you have fancy jobs. Nice to have a nice call like this. But let us not be overly limited by external niceties. Our students tell me, sir, you know, we can work in a nice company called SAP or GE or PCS or InfoSales, you know, we have a nice air condition offices, we have a gym, we have a box, we have a green, etc. If you ask them, you know, can you do great work in Borbangla? They say, maybe yes, sir. If you ask them in Jayanagar, they say, look, for great, sir, you can eat clean, nothing more in Jayanagar. Jayanagar, for great, sir. JP in the first phase, second phase, third phase, as you go further and further, you know, it is kind of less and less uh, fancy. But out of the Jayanagar seventh phase, one non district house came a technology which was licensed by Apple. iPods were unwired by a technology which came from a company called Impulse Soft. So I can go on. So idea is that not to get a tag. I have worked on very recently, I used to get help this company. So, many of you might have heard of a company called Palma. 
you go along with great or not power store of uh, uh, smartphones and uh, you know, four years back Android was coming. Android is very nice, but Android needed higher phones. So some smart fellow said, can we make an Android for ARM or me? Android for ordinary phones. And he went ahead and built one. This company is in another non-descript place called HSR Layout. HSR Layout, once again in a shandy building, these people built an interesting phone operating system. Just got acquired by Qualcomm. It's called Mango Technologies. So what is interesting is, a whole bunch of things have happened, right in this town, happening in this country. That is the reason why we are talking to you. Okay? So let's take a come to something which is even more interesting. Okay? I think that's where I'll stop in another five minutes. Okay? So again, no, no, it's okay. Because you know, I should, it's okay. it should not be uh, information overload. But I think, I think, okay. Now look at the variety. Okay, once again, I don't know how many of you know that you see a lot of Muslims go to Mecca. Right. And you know, like the Hajj is one of the largest human congregation, five and a half, six and a half million, and over a period, 50 million. So a company called Everett Packer built the entire visa process, it was the largest visa process system in the world. They handled 56 million in 2008, and not kept track in the last few years. And suddenly Saudi Arabia found that they also have problems with too many people coming. They said, well, how do we create a large number of pilots so that I can improve the quality? And lo and behold, two youngsters in Kerala built a new pilot and they have an order for 10,000 pilots. Okay? So it's very interesting. It costs, because it is for Saudi Arabia, so obviously cost is not a problem. So it, it, it charges two dollars for service. But the good thing is, you can put it in a remote area and it's all digital. Okay? It's a nice touch screen, you press it, it opens, goes put your, uh, uh, swipe your card, two dollars down. But you know, it's really interesting, right? So don't look at IT only from simple software. I don't know how many of you know, the world's largest producer of papaya, it's called Candy Papaya. Okay? You can go to the Alibaba site, now, Alibaba is the equivalent of Google in China. Alibaba site sells this. And these photos export to Maharashtra, France, Japan, and Singapore. Okay? And, what they did was, they actually needed some very sophisticated control systems. They actually kind of licensed the technology from a professor in Germany and they have been extremely well. And they have brands in Assam. Right? Do you know how we don't think industrialization happens in Assam? Anyway. And of course, I did mention about it. And of course, right in this city, okay, you know, like, on an average, I think this country loses 63,000 babies. A month, 63,000 babies die simply because we are not able to provide what is called a baby walk. Because people just can't afford a baby walk. And you can actually go to the website and find out. A couple of Stanford students, they spent some time in GE and they came with the initial designs. Finally, this kind of made in GE here. It's called Embrace. Good thing is, it does not need electricity, it is portable, can be sterilized. And of course, it costs much, much less. What happens is you don't associate baby one with IT. But remember, IT will change the world. IT has to save life. IT has to improve life. If it does not do, throw the IT. Okay, and that is what I want you to do. Okay. And once again, you know, like uh, very poor government that you know, four years back when the force is completed 25 years, Narayan Modi decided to institute a global award. First time an Indian company went ahead and had a global award. The highest award in computing used to be called a Turing Award. In fact, now there is another award from ACM, it's called ACM Infosys Award. And the third year the award went to Eric Grover. Eric Grover is a great guy, computer science professor, and uh, he came with some very interesting theorems. Okay. And he also does some funding, etc. He has funded two of his students running. In Bihar, rural area, there is a company which actually provides electricity to rural homes. Their size is 1,000 homes. For 1,000 homes, they have perfect energy. They will actually deliver electricity at a rate that is cheaper than electricity was, completely out of renewable energy. Okay. It will probably take maybe three years for them to perfect it. If they do it, they can scale it, they will change this country. Okay. 